are different from the raindrops that are contributing to Brian's rainbow. Yeah, but it's still like over there. It's still over there, but it's shifted, yeah. right? Yes. It would be shifted by the same amount that the, dis the distance between your eyeball and her eyeball and my eyeball. So, a, so it arcs the other way if you're standing like over, you know, of it, like in front of the camera versus to the side? Because I'm wondering, so it's still based upon that, the beam of light that's still hidden. Yes, the, the, those angles are fixed. Yeah. So instead of my standing here, if I was standing here by the camera, right? And I'm still looking in the same direction because... Well, not that direction, I'm saying like, if you're standing from the dark board or the... The white board? Okay. The white board, mm -hmm. looking at the rainbow. I would not see a rainbow. No. Yes, because what happens is, I have to be looking, the sun is there. So I have to be looking such that I'm looking directly away from the sun. So if I'm looking at any angle other than directly away from the sun, I will not see the rainbow. Now, I may see out of my peripheral vision, a rainbow that's caused by the sunlight scattering in that direction. Right? Extra credit. Good question. If there was a third rainbow, what color would it start with? Uh, the third rainbow would be inverted once more, so it would be the same order, order of reflections as the first one. Right? Extra credit. Extra credit to any of you who can find an authentic three concentric rain, rainbow photograph anywhere. Right? We can do Google images if you wish. Okay, introducing the concept of a total internal reflection. Okay, total internal reflection is reflection that's internal and it's total. Right? Isn't that amazing? Okay, yes. So, here's a fish in a swimming pool looking up at the surface of the swimming pool, right? And what happens is, now you can do this and the next time you happen to be at the bottom of the swimming pool. Don't stay there too long though, right? So as you look up, you will find that there is a circular ring, there's a circular region, let's say we are all at the bottom of the swimming pool, right? At the bottom of the swimming pool looking up, there's a circular region above us through which we're able to see things outside the pool, right? We can see the birds fly and tree limbs or whatever, right? Past that angle, we cannot see what's in the air above. What we see is a reflection of the insides of the pool, right? Mm -hmm. So. Here's the fish looking up and through the circular region what happens is it can see things that are up in the atmosphere but anything beyond that circular region what happens is the light rays, you can think of it this way, if the light ray were to start from the fish's eye travel up in this direction and it leaves the pool out into the atmosphere and as it travels, the second beam traveling in this direction the beam bends even further. At this particular angle, the beam, okay, let's say an angle between the two of these, the beam bends enough to have the beam travel parallel to the surface of the water. Any more bending, and what happens is the beam bends and bounces off the surface of the water down into the, into the pool. This is if you had a flashlight here. Now the beam, the rays of light coming to the, the fish of the eye, the eye of the fish, travel the same path but in the opposite direction from what we had described if we had a flashlight pointing in different directions, right? So this angle is called the critical angle and anything past this point is totally internally reflected. All the light is reflected inside the pool. Yeah, so this is more, I think, better explained in this situation where if you had, we're at the bottom of a pool shining a flashlight out and let's say that you had carbon dioxide, uh, you know, this stage smoke up there. You'd be able to see the, the light ray coming out of the water. You tilt this a little more and this beam bends, 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 bends. Up like this angle, the beam is perfectly parallel to the surface. Any more, an angle any greater than this, what happens is this complete internal reflection. And this critical, this is the critical angle actually. This is the angle, critical angle is the angle where the light goes perfectly horizontal. Anything past the point is totally internally reflected. So the critical angle is the minimum angle of incidence. Remember that the angle of incidence is within the normal and the light ray inside the medium at which the light ray is totally reflected. None of the light comes through to the other side at all. Okay, introducing the converging lens. Converging lens is a lens that is thicker in the middle than at the edges and it causes parallel rays to focus down to a point. So here's the converging lens. It's thicker here, thinner here. 
and what happens is the parallel rays coming in get converged, they focus down to a point. A diverging lens on the other hand is kind of like the inversion of this. The diverging lens is skinny in the middle and thick at the top and the bottom. In this case what happens is the parallel beam coming in actually spreads out. Right? So an application of this for instance would be in your car headlights. In, your, in the headlights of your car, the light that's created inside the the headlight, you want it to spread out to create a beam, right? That spreads at least horizontally. You don't want it to spread out like too much vertically, but horizontally to and to some extent vertically to illuminate more of the road. Okay, introducing a few concepts that are critical to lenses. Here's a lens, converging lens. There's a center of curvature. The center of curvature is the center of that circle where I draw this circle, right? I extend this out to create a circle. That's the central curvature of this side of the lens. This is the central curvature of that side of the lens. Now based on the, the material that you use in the lens and so on, what happens is this gives us a focal point here, where the focal length is the distance from the center of the lens to the focal point. The focal point is that place where, if I have a parallel beam of light coming to the lens, it focuses down to that point. That's the focal point. The principal axis is basically that line traveling through the center of the lens. So if you look at image formation with a converging lens, here's the flower, here's a converging lens. Rays of light from the top of the flower travel like this and they get bent downwards here. A ray of light traveling here gets bent in this direction and it, and it focuses down here. Similarly, rays of light from the bottom of the vase, in this case, travel up, get focused here, travel horizontally, get focused there. Through these line diagrams, we are able to determine that a vase with a flower creates an image that's inverted, it's upside down with respect to this. And now this is what happens in our eye. The image that we see of the world around us is formed upside down on our retina because our lens, our eye lens, does exactly this. Here's the world, the lens takes it and creates an image that's upside down. Now our brain then process that, processes that upside down image to give us signals that our mind then interprets to create a model of reality. And what we see is really that model of reality. Right? So do some people have like some deficiency of that and then they see everything upside down? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that is the case. Now there have been experiments where uh, People have actually worn glasses, they've had student volunteers who wear glasses that invert the world. So, so it undoes the brain inversion, right? So for a while it's really confusing because everything looks upside down. But then the amazing thing is our brain rewires itself, or learns to recompute. So the person who was seeing things upside down through these glasses, like one day they wake up and they start seeing things straight way up, right? So let, let them do that for a while. Then take off the glasses, the whole world is upside down. <laughs> and it takes a while for them to adjust backwards. Really, I mean, our brain is like totally phenomenal. Okay, real image. A real image is an image formed by light rays that converge at the location of the image. So a real image is one where I can put a screen there and I see the image. So you notice that there is an image on the screen? That is a real image because it's, it's an image and it's real. I can actually put my hand there. See, I can touch the image. There's a piece of chocolate on the... You can go and lick the chocolate and you can actually taste it, right? So, no? Okay. It looks like this. Only so much that I can get by you guys. Okay, so there's a real image. So here's an object on the table, a candle, and here's a lens. What happens the light rays go through the lens and create an upside down image. And you can actually put an image of the candle on the wall. This is kind of like, here's the sun, don't do this experiment. Take a converging lens and you can get the sun's image on paper or kind of like on a microscope. We did, a, we did a project where we had to cut out an E out of newspaper and mm -hmm. put it on the lens and I saw it upside down. Okay. Was only one if you could actually see the image on the paper then it's a real image. Mm -hmm. A virtual image is like it's an image that is not real. You can see the image but you cannot capture it on a screen. Mm -hmm. So, an example of, we'll see examples of a virtual image. A virtual image is like something that, um, hmm, you can see, oh, like a mirror, right? So you stand, stand in front of the mirror and you see an image, 
which is two feet, like you're two feet in front of the mirror, you stand in front of the mirror and the, the image appears to be two feet behind the mirror. The question is, can you place a screen two feet behind the mirror and somebody looks at it and they see an image? The answer is no. Yet, the image appears as if it's two feet behind the mirror, but it's not really there. That is a virtual image, right? So the different way, other different ways in which you can create a virtual image. Okay, aberration is basically, I'm going a little longer on the lecture today so that we can go shorter on the lecture uh, in two days, right? Just for your awareness. Aberration is a distortion in an image produced by a lens which is typically present in, there's some kind of aberration in all optical systems. So it's basically a distortion. Something that should be a circle is elongated in one direction or the other, right? It's kind of, don't do this experiment, like if you were to squeeze your eyeball or, or extend it, I don't know if you've noticed that the world looks kind of squished or dist distorted in some direction, there's some degree of such distortion in all of our eyes, all our lenses, and typically also with glass lenses and so forth. Oh wow, that was the last slide. Okay, so that was my target, to see if I could go ahead and uh, complete this lecture. I tend to go a little slower with light because the phenomena that we are experiencing here and talking about are not as intuitive as some of the phenomena that we dealt with with mechanics, motion and so forth. Okay? So just a reminder to you all to go ahead and look through the multiple choice questions after the lecture and that's part of your uh, tasks.